In 21st century America, Orthodox Jewish musicians have sought to maintain the beliefs and practices of their community while also acting within and reacting to the broader musical and social landscapes in which they live. In recent decades, this issue has come to the foreground due to the proliferation of the internet, which is variously seen as a boon or a danger. While some Orthodox musicians have embraced the internet as an important means of inspiration, collaboration, promotion, and distribution, others who resist the internet have reinforced older technologies of music transmission, such as brick and mortar record shops, radio, and call and phone lines. Orthodox Jews tend to look rightward for religious needs. Therefore, our emphasis on Haredi musicians is not accidental, but rather a reflection of the dynamics that impact who creates and consumes Orthodox music. Our study focuses on three areas of Orthodox Jewish music. I will speak about contemporary Orthodox popular music, Asya Weissman Shulman, will speak about Hasidic women's musical creativity, and Jeremiah Lockwood will speak about Orthodox liturgical music. I now turn to Orthodox popular music. While the Orthodox music industry was already well established by the start of the new millennium, it has grown significantly over the past two decades, largely due to the internet. Musicians, including those from very conservative sectors of Orthodox society, Post highly produced music videos on YouTube, and their music can be purchased through online musical music retailers that cater specifically to the Orthodox community. Some music videos, such as those by modern Orthodox a cappella group the Maccabees, become popular beyond Orthodox audiences and are passed throughout the Jewish community. Additionally, Haredi Jews distribute music within their community through smartphone applications that facilitate group communication, such as WhatsApp and Telegram and many musicians have popular social media accounts. Some more conservative community members do not use smartphones, yet still use technology to distribute music through devices such as USB flash drives and CDs burned on home computers. For some, the contemporary ease of access to non-Orthodox culture has prompted increased concern over communal boundary maintenance and contestation over the appropriateness of music has been a proxy for larger issues of cultural continuity. This has resulted in attempts to censor music, ban concerts, and provide technology such as Naki or clean radio that brings only kosher music into the home. Contrastingly, Orthodox popular music has been changed by the presence of Baalei Teshuva, those are Jews who would choose to adopt Orthodoxy, who bring the music styles of their youth into their new community. Importantly, the contemporary ease of communication and travel between Israel and America has resulted in an ever-increasing transnational quality to the music industry. Important figures in Orthodox popular music in America in the 21st century have included Bulletproof Stockings, Matis Yahu, Lipa Schmelzer, Nisim Black, Yaakov Shweki, and Zusha, among many others. Because of Kol Be'isha, a Jewish religious regulation that states that women's voices are considered sensually attractive, Hasidic women generally do not perform for mixed gender audiences or commercially record vocal music. In all female contexts, however, many opportunities exist for women and girls to sing and listen to music. The most musically active period in a Hasidic woman's life is during her school years. At all girls' schools and camps, music serves as both a source of entertainment and as a didactic tool for reinforcing the faith of the students and teaching them about their role in Hasidic society. Girls write songs for elaborate yearly theatrical productions, they sing at fundraising events, at camp Shabbos meals and debunk competitions, and in class. These songs are generally quite long and complex and written in English or Yiddish with a large component of Hebrew quotations from liturgy and biblical texts. The topics of the songs fall mainly into five categories, the Sabbath, motherhood, faith in God, exile and redemption, and the Holocaust. While women and girls frequently author the lyrics, the melodies are usually borrowed from Hasidic men's music, as well as from non-Hasidic and even non-Jewish sources. Authorship of songs written by women is almost never acknowledged. Songs are written for the educational or spiritual enrichment of the community and not for personal advancement. Although a few semi-professional female musicians do work in the community, adult women are rarely able to dedicate full-time work to music as their time is occupied by raising large families and often providing for the household. In their leisure time, however, Hasidic women sing and listen to music and women's vocal music reinforces boundaries internally between Hasidic men and women and externally between Hasidim and outsiders by providing a culturally appropriate and content-rich avenue for musical expression. 
Uh, to conclude, I'll play a short excerpt from a song by Schiffer Lowen, who was a prolific songwriter among Tosh Hasidim in Montreal before she left the Hasidic community with her family. Her songs were very popular and sung by many schoolgirls, and this short excerpt is about the importance of a girl's role in maintaining tradition through her family. Still by side and dark, in a tiv behalten art, like that a far megan, keiner weiser wegen, an Eidelstein a selten tai. Haredi prayer practices have preserved and continuously adopted liturgical styles that derive from historic Jewish communities in Europe. Multiple forms of Nusach HaTefillah, or prayer melodies and modes, are heard in Haredi prayer houses. The Hasidic community boasts a handful of semi-professional Baal Tefillahs, or prayer leaders, who are valued as liturgical experts. But in general, prayer leading is not professionalized, and the most prestigious services are reserved for rabbinic leaders. The dearth of focus on aesthetics in prayer is one factor leading to a recent musical development in the Hasidic community, cantorial revival. A cohort of young singers have turned to classic Jewish records of the early 20th century to establish musical identities as cantors, engaging with an aestheticized prayer music that is unusual and potentially transgressive in their birth community. Cantorial revival has found more receptive avenues of expression outside of synagogues, in concert halls, uh, at internet-based videos, and at parties on the fringe of the community. And I'll, I'll play a, a brief clip of a, uh, a, a cantorial uh, music party. participatory folk liturgy of late 20th century songwriters such as Shlomo Karlbach and music by Orthodox pop stars are prevalent in modern Orthodox services. In recent decades, women's voices have become more audible in modern Orthodox synagogue as well, as balkoras or scriptural, scriptural prayer, prayer readers, uh, and as well as, as lay prayer leaders, both in all female prayer services and in the emerging phenomenon of partnership minyanim, uh, prayer groups that include women leadership in mixed gender services. <laughs> <laughs> 